We're all about the arches. I'm Philippa. I'm Lauren. This week we cover... A very grumpy Lillian. The fate of Emma's car. A plethora of food references. And Alistair and Denise, will they, won't they? I should start by saying Merry Christmas, shouldn't I, really? Definitely start by saying Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Philippa. (gasps) Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Lauren, because we are recording how we're doing it, Lauren, I don't know, but we're recording on Boxing Day. (laughs) So we are covering episodes up to and including the 26th of December. You have been warned about spoilers. So, Lauren, how has your Christmas been? Have you had a lovely time thus far? Well, I've had a lovely time, a lovely time. I've got a house full at the moment. So, I've, to be honest, this was quite nice to be like, oh, I know I've got to go off and listen to the archers by myself in the study where there's nobody else here um, <laughs> and then record a podcast. So, yeah, quite looking forward to today, but absolutely got a house full. I've had a lovely, lovely Christmas, lots of presents and food and fun and festivities. What about yourself? Yes, just the most wonderful time. I was asked today if I wanted a glass of fizz and I was like, no, thank you. Got to record a podcast. Don't want to embarrass myself. (laughs) We won't go down that road. But no, just a lovely time with family and presents and board games today. And just, yeah, very, very nice. But What's been the big hit board game today? A game that I can't remember the name of. So that's particularly helpful. (laughs) And it was brilliant, but I can't remember what it's called. So there we go. It's a cliffhanger, I know. But enough about us, Lauren. So much has happened in yes. Ambridge so far this week. Tell me, what are your thoughts so far? What What are your faves? Tell me your faves. Well, I feel a bit. I feel like Ambridge has had a bit of a quiet Christmas. Really, I didn't feel like all that much happened. I mean, there was potential for something happening between. Um, Denise and Alistair, I felt like maybe that was going somewhere yesterday after Christmas dinner, an emergency stock operation. (laughs) Um, But again, nothing happened. Do you think something would have happened had Paul not walked in? Yeah, I was very glad he did walk in because I was concerned that they just had this packet of Brussels sprout crisps to eat and nothing else for the whole day and they were starving. And I thought, my goodness, are they going to be eating dog food or something? So I was relieved when Paul walked in just to feed them. But yes, I don't know... I don't know what might have happened if he'd walked in later. I, yeah, there I could thought, have been a bit of a look, Alistair took a bit of a leap, you know, because she was sort of had only just said, yeah, there's problems in my marriage. I haven't just been staying here because of, um, I've forgotten his name, but the guy that she doesn't get on with, I haven't just been staying here because of that. There's yes. things going on, me and John are living separate lives. And then he sort of le- leapt in, didn't he, with a, you really do look beautiful in your hat. <laughs> but by the way, can I just say, you really do look beautiful in your hat, Philippa. Thank you. And you look very beautiful (laughs) in your antlers. But people need to go to YouTube to see this. Or maybe we'll put a photo on Facebook. So, yes, we are a sight on. And I feel like they're um, they're a bit interfering with the old headphones. So if there's any of the rattling going on, it's it's the antlers fault. (laughs) It's all in the name of Christmas. I thought that Alistair, he needs some lessons, I think, in the art of coping with someone you, you... you quite like he as you say he was sort of straight in there and is Denise actually aware I mean I think she is because that's why she moved to work in a different location wasn't it that she felt uncomfortable with things and she was still married but (laughs) she must know that there's some sort of like chemistry or something going on but um yeah I mean I guess he's out of practice isn't he he's been he was married for many years and uh, he's not used to it like flirting's not top of his list of skills I guess but yeah yeah he did sort of leap into it and let's remember who he was married to St (laughs) Shula so yes it's not even that the bar is low but the bar is yes yeah away from sight yeah um and and then I thought tonight's episode, Boxing Day, um, yeah, just Lillian being miserable. What did you think? <laughs> like, absolutely. Getting in on Tracy and Emma, I felt really bad for them and just really being miserable, like proper cow, weren't she? I could imagine by the end of the night, the entire load of people in the pub were all restocking for Jolene behind yeah. the scenes because <laughs> Lillian was getting angry with absolutely. all of them. <laughs> There'd be 50 people Absolutely. restocking and Lillian fuming. What? what has the bull got to do with Lillian? Does she, is she part ownership of it or something? Yes, she is. She is part right, ownership. Okay. Yes. Right. 
I remembered I was trying to, when I was listening to it, and I was thinking, God, how rude is she just sitting in there just moaning about everyone? And I was thinking, no, because I remember when they tried to rebrand it as the B. I remember mm. her being very much involved with that. But, like, she doesn't work there, obviously, like, behind the bar and stuff. But I couldn't believe how awful. I was actually thinking about Katie, and I was thinking, I wonder how Katie's finding me. <laughs> she loves Lillian. So was she yeah. as with Lillian as I was? I, I mean, I found it to be quite funny because she was such a Christmas grouch and the fact that Justin had said he'd had a pretty good day. (laughs) I just think Lillian's heading for a bit of a breakdown. As I said previously, I think she hasn't dealt with Jenny's death and I think it's all coming home to roost. And uh, it's it's sad. And what about Emma and her car? Do you think they have car insurance? Because that's my worry that it's oh. lapsed. Or, or is it? I think they've got insurance, but I don't think it's going to be covered by this. Like, I just felt so bad for Ed. Like throughout, so on Christmas Eve when him and um, Jazza went pub, 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 lads, lads, lads. Um, and he was talking about wanting to become a tree surgeon. And then tonight, talking about not having that sort of like safety buffer of a little bit of money that could just help out with that. And talking about presents and stuff like that. And I just think, mm. oh, God. And then right at the end, he said to her, oh, you're still really sexy, you know, when you're <laughs> like in your pyjamas. And I thought, oh, God, they, they, they really love each other and they're really in a good place at the moment. But it's just this money thing that's just sort of like hanging over them all the time. And I just think, oh, bless them. Like, wish they'd just get a bit of luck or just something. Like, I, I like them both such a lot, especially Emma, now that we've, we're best friends with Emerald. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. And I don't want, it's not like I think they need to win the lottery, but just no, have a bit of stability. Exactly. Just, it doesn't need to go from one end to the other. But he was talking no. about having a financial cushion, first of all, and I felt for him. But then he was saying about this course, even after all the support he could get, £17,000. That's not a financial cushion. That's a financial planet that he needs. It's a huge amount. I know. I just feel so bad for them. And I just thought that when they were talking about the Christmas and saying, oh, it was a nice day in the end and even George and Kira were getting on and stuff like that. And then just, but still in the back of your mind, he's always that thought. He's like, oh, I still wish I could have got you more. And this thing with the pony that's just hanging over everyone. I mean, him saying, oh, well, we didn't get Kira a pony. And I was like, who needs a pony at two years old? They're three. I think she's, I think she's, she's, she's three. almost three. I think they yeah. said she's going to be three at her next birthday. So uh, she's, yeah. she's nearly three. But oh, goodness me. Even Alice, I think, was a bit embarrassed. Yeah, I had mixed views about this because, first of all, I thought, oh, this is a really bad thing to have done, Chris. Bad decision. But then I started thinking, is it about control? Because he's had no control over recent events you know Alice left yeah. him Alice had her addiction Alice went into rehab now Alice is dating Harry and everything seems rosy yeah. and so was it his way of just trying to climb back on that control tree I, I don't think he did it to score points and I think it was a bit wrong of no, Alice I, to have I a think... go yeah, I, I think it is a sort of like a, a proof thing or just proving to himself even that he, he can still do that. And I wonder if he did, had not had that experience where <laughs> Harry tricked him into meeting up with him. I wonder if he'd have even done this. Um, like, I feel like maybe that was something to be like, well, tr- trying to just be like, well, okay, I am a good dad. Not that he was questioning his dad skills, but like just just give it like boosted his own like confidence a bit by just doing this but yeah I mean I don't doubt she'll have a lovely time on that pony I mean wouldn't you she's in a horsey family I'm sure that'll be lovely but who needs a pony when they're two and calling it champion (laughs) and wasn't it a Shetland pony so it's going to be this ditzy little lovely little thing I just oh is it a dog is it a sheep no it's a pony lovely (laughs) a question for you Lauren do you give your vet Christmas presents no, no, I don't. My vet is lovely, though. So I, I've, I thought about this, like, when they were talking about vets' presents and what they were getting. And some of the random stuff they were getting, loads and loads of cuddly toys. I was like, no one's dropping cuddly toys off and stuff like that. <laughs> Brussels sprout flavoured crisps. Yes. Um, what else was there in there? Oh, a pair of socks with, uh, with something yes. else. I was like, who's dropping off these random presents that they're then just divvying out between them? But, yeah. My vet is lovely and I should consider that, but 
No, I don't think I'd be getting that sort of thing. It just big box of celebrations. That's all any any team <laughs> wants at this time of year, isn't it? <laughs> well, what about you? Sprout- Are you down the vets buying them prizzies? No, I am not. It, as, like you say, it hadn't occurred to me. And what? I mean, I would buy my kid's teacher a present in the hope of, you know, my child actually doing better at school. <laughs> Pure blackmail. Just uh-huh. please help my child. Uh, so there would be that. But I feel, I don't, I, I just feel the vet. Maybe if I'd needed some Christmas call out, I would have. Given them a present, yeah. I don't know, but that that's not a thing. But we've mentioned sprout flavored Chris a couple of times, so permit me to we go have. through my food options. I'm sure Permission you'll help me granted. out. Thank you. We had Scandi mince pies, sounded delicious. Mm. We had a that's chocolate that was gift to the vet. Potatoes, carrots, sprouts, turkey, meat that Freddie was chatting about, beef, gravy. <laughs> Also chocolate, yeah. nasty chocolates that were another vet mm. gift and the sprout flavoured crisps. Have I left anything out? Have I let well, the I've public got a down? Few more, yeah. I've got the reignition of lemon drizzle. So they mentioned again how oh. Stella and Jill were sitting yeah. together and the lemon drizzle had been forgotten. There was a lot of talk about having a coffee before Emma went to work in the morning. And there was also chats. About champagne and Prosecco. So just a few little more ones there. But, I mean, yeah. there were so many in these three days that between us, there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 food mentions. You see, I'm not counting drinks as food, but maybe I need to. Oh. I think that's what I need to do. But you, the lemon drizzle it. cake I hadn't included. So now... I apologise to everybody. I've I've let you down. I wondered if this was the episode that they all recorded when they were doing the cake testing for the children in need, because a lot of people that were in the videos were those. So I was wondering how much sugar I they'd see. had when they were recording those. Yeah. Not that it not that it seemed to not come enough through. Not the actor who plays Lillian. <laughs> Any other phase before we get on to our flops? Anything that particularly um, stood out? Quite pleased that Paul's staying. That Denise yeah. is coming back and Paul's staying. I'm quite, I quite like Paul. I don't feel like I know yeah. him well, but I'm quite enjoying him. So pleased that he said. I've just loved sort of hearing about people's Christmases. It's one of my favourite things to talk about anyway. What are you up to at Christmas? Who you got coming around? And uh, like the, the sort of coming together of the of uh, uh, them coming along to uh, Paul and Lily and Josh's and using the oven and that all working out and stuff like that. I was quite into that. What yes. about you? Any more faves? That was my other fave. That community yeah. lunch uh, in Ambridge. I love that. I love hearing that Jill and Stella are okay now. Drinking sherry and doing a jigsaw sounds perfect to me. So yeah. I was relieved that that was okay. Yeah, you you've mentioned everything there. So. Onto the flops, I suppose, related to that, I wanted to hear what everybody bought each other as Christmas presents. I'm really interested yeah. in that. Yeah, I'm also interested in that. So I will, I'll I'll take that as a flop as well. More detail on the prezies. <laughs> and we heard about the Brookfield cooking catastrophe, despite them having presumably an aga and an oven. But anyway, is there oh, yeah. no air fryer in Ambridge? That is, That was my flop. <laughs> That they could have just stuck the old turkey in the air fryer and some roasties. I had potatoes in the air fryer for my Christmas dinner, actually, and they were very good. We very, had very York- good. We had Yorkshire puddings in the air fryer for Christmas Day, and they were there. We go, brilliant. Take it to air fryer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably in about twenty years, one will turn up in Ambridge eventually. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, now we started it well. Quentin started it last week, so I'm going to continue the theme. And he started the Star of the Week little moment. Who is your Star of the Week, Lauren, so far? I guess I'm going to pick Denise. I think she's quite unflappable, unflappable in the face of Christmas dinner drums, unflappable in the face of an operation that involves someone having eaten a Christmas sock. I thought they said yeah. unflappable mm. in the face of Alistair flirting with her, telling her how beautiful she looks in her hat. Denise is my star of the week. <laughs> yes, she was a runner up for me, but I'm actually going to choose Paul because I like the fact that he'd had 
two glasses of bubbly so he couldn't operate. So Denise had to go. So I liked how that all worked yeah. out. I think Paul's fun at Christmas. He's sparkly and nice and keeps the party atmosphere going. He, he's someone I'd want to yeah. spend Christmas with. So in some ways, I'd like to make Lillian star of the week just because I think she needs to have picked me up. But I, I, I fear getting it on her in her wrong books for, for making her star of the week. So yeah. I don't know. No, I wouldn't have we accepted can't... Lillian as star of the week, Philippa. I wouldn't have accepted it. <laughs> the anti-star. The, uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Now we come on to predictions, Lauren. Tell me your predictions. I'm, I'm, I'm lacking in predictions this week. You know, I was thinking, do I think this tree surgeon thing is going to happen for Ed? No, I don't think it is. Do I think Emma and Tracy are going to be successful in getting Lillian and Justin back together? <laughs> No. So I think my predictions are is that none of what has been spoken about this week is going to come to any fruition. So I think these are all just pipe dreams. I don't think, I can't see Lillian and Justin back together despite Emma and Tracy giving it a go. I don't see Ed being able to come up with the capital to get that tree surgeon thing on the road. I don't think anything's going to happen with Alistair and Denise. There we go. I just think my predictions are nothing's going to happen. What are your predictions? <laughs> My predictions are we've had a happy Christmas day, really. I mean, I know yeah. Lillian said she yeah. wasn't, but generally it was happy. So I'm thinking we're going to have an unhappy New Year's Eve. There's going to be some sort of big cliffhanger next week. Yeah, that is true because I do feel like not all that much happened over Christmas. Like there wasn't, I mean, it felt quite normal, didn't it? There wasn't a big event or anything like that. So, yeah, I imagine there's going to be some sort of, I mean, we still haven't had Rob's funeral. We've got this sort of a few bits hanging around and stuff. So yeah, maybe New Year's is going to be the the big the big party. And I'm not convinced Alistair and Denise are going to work out. Even if something happens, I think long term, I don't know. I, I'd love it to for them, but I don't know. Yeah, no. There's Me too much going on. But there we go. We have covered the week and you need to get back to your Boxing Day buffet and everyone. I've got a, I've got a house full. Yahtzee's on the card. Yahtzee. We've got Yahtzee to play. Fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Well, next week it will be the four of us in our wearing glitter. I think that's the dress code that we've got on the 2nd of January. New Year's celebrate party. New Year. Yeah, Going New to be Year great. party, not New Year's New Eve. Year. Yes, 2nd of January. We'll have a great time. <laughs> and uh, yes, just Merry Christmas, everyone, and look forward to celebrating the new year next week. So it's a uh, goodbye from me. And a Merry Christmas and a goodbye from me. Bye-bye, everyone.